Um, and Todd, if you wanted to carry on with, uh, do you reuse content? Oh, what absolutely, as often as possible. Um, and, you know, there's, you know, to me, there's also, you know, there's a, um, uh, there, there's a, like an order of things, you know, on the internet. Um, if you're, you know, if you're trying to send people to your website, I think you need to be intentional about, you know, about how you do that. So my favorite workflow right now is um, to post things to a WordPress, a self-hosted WordPress website where I have full control over the search engine optimization. And from there, I automatically post to my Google Plus uh, page, and then I'll turn around and comment on that from my Google Plus profile. Yeah. And the reason why I'm doing it in that way is that it, um, it sends people back to the website where I can control the whole experience, but I'm using the authority, the, you know, the power of the Google Plus page combined with the authority of my personal profile to show up in search. Now, after that, you know, I still continue to feed my Facebook page and my LinkedIn page and my Twitter profile, but, you know, if I only could use three tools, those would be the tools in the order in which I, uh, I use them. And it, it's okay to go back into your website and to grab things that haven't been exposed to search by a Google Plus and, and dig those up every once in a while. Right. Excellent. Ludo? Uh, yeah, I, um, I tend to, to reuse it in, uh, in two forms. Uh, most likely I will reuse it in a, in a current blog post. I will uh, post link to previous posts in terms of giving background or, or giving you know, more emphasis to the story. If people are interested in some of the background, they can follow these links. And these links can be you know, reuse of my own content or content from somebody else. Uh, you know, I think that's, that is also relevant. And then I tend to write the articles. Uh, you, you know, the articles fall into two categories. One that fall, uh, the post falls into something that is current. Uh, maybe like a, a trade show or my review of a trade show or something which don't have necessarily a long-term value uh, but uh, other articles I write purposefully so that I know I could reuse them later on and then I would use them uh, on my Twitter feed to maybe uh, repost you know with someone or I might reuse them in, in comments that I make on LinkedIn or in other uh, platform I might put a link to an older post um, I don't. Uh, I don't automatically reuse the content. I, I, I tend to try to make it into something that is relevant to the current situation. Um, so, for example, even if I have an old review, like for example, when I did the review of a farm board this this year of 2014, it was interesting because I was able to reference the post that I did in uh, 2010 in terms of comparing some of the numbers that were in there. Um, so, so that was a reuse of the, of the post. Excellent. And Jason? Um, we, we pretty much do the same thing at MBA AA. Um, we, uh, for every article that we post, go through kind of a packaging process where we create uh, the associated uh, tweet, uh, Facebook post, LinkedIn post, and Google Plus post. Um, so we post the article on the website. Uh, we get it out on social media. Uh, we have a, a small blurb that appears uh, in our weekly email newsletter. Um, and we also, like Ludu does, uh, try to reference previous articles on the same topic. Uh, and often um, this will show kind of NBAA's um, focus on a particular issue so that we reinforce that, yes, we're on, we're on this issue, um, but also sometimes to just give updates on, on you know, changes in um, airspace procedures or, or whatever it is. Uh, we don't tend to retweet things uh, or send the same tweet to, to resources, um, you know, again and again. And I've seen some people do that um, a lot, and I think there's value in, in doing, you know, hitting the, the East Coast, West Coast people at different times. We haven't tended to do that yet. Um, we, we were, you know, we're thinking about it. Um, I guess I'd caution people from overdoing that because it can... Uh, for those that follow you closely, and kind of punish them so that they see uh, stale stuff. So, 
Jason, G- that's a very interesting uh, thing that you just mentioned because because that's one of my pet peeves is that is that there there are people that treat um, I think Twitter like live TV. You know, when it's gone, it's gone. They think. Um, in other words, like if you miss the broadcast, then I have to broadcast again for the West Coast because they will not see it. Um, when I look at the num- the tracking number on my blog, for example, I'm always surprised as to when somebody is reading an article. And so I might have written a post uh, last week and tweeted about it and so on. And then maybe four or five weeks later, suddenly there's hits on that on that uh, post because the you know somehow through the search engine they've searched for that term and it came. And so it sort of taught me that that Twitter is not like live TV. It actually lives on forever. And you know you could see hits on some of the posts that you've done in the past coming through. So I tried to resist the temptation of having to retweet that multiple times just to in case somebody missed it. Um, uh, you know, I see that a lot of people are Googling and searching for things and then finding it. And then the people that are really interested in what I'm saying are following me anyway or are following the hashtags in which I post. So I think that they, they catch it. Yeah, I think the, the counter to that, though, is you have to know your audience because there's some uh, Twitter users who are um, very casual. Um, and, you know, for those people, if they're only following a handful of companies, um, they may focus, you know, every time they go in on the 5, 12 um, companies that, that they have actually follow. So those repeats will be more obvious. But for other people who have you know, larger, um, who follow more people, dip in and out of their Twitter stream, um, you know, all the time, they may not notice the duplication as much, um, you know, if they're if they're not really tuned into what you're saying. So you kind of have to know who uh, who your audience is, how techy savvy they are, um, and just listen. Right. Watch the data. You know you could.